we get to do the we're ready to believe. Oh my gosh, yeah, we get to step forward. Okay, you ready to step forward? We can you look at the down the steps. We're ready to believe you. I almost said the wrong show. Um, <laughs> welcome to Ready to Believe. Uh, <laughs> James not here. <laughs> and so I got Steve Hosnose Lewis to step in. How you doing, Steve? I'm doing great. I'm doing better than Jamie. <laughs> I'm thrown off because Jamie is supposed to be leading these things and I don't know what to do right now. I don't know what to do with my hands. But <laughs> it was great because we came all the way to Victoria, BC to talk to Steve about his Proton Pack. Now, first of all, we are going to take a quick tour, a quick tour of just the place. I mean, right in the background, this is where you do all your painting, right? Yep. Yep. The mini magic. The mini, and you do some, he does some great stuff regarding, yes, you do. Great stuff painting uh, miniatures for d d It looks fantastic. Uh, hose and nose paints on Instagram. But we're here to take a look at a Proton Pack, the one you built 3D? 3D printed. So give us a quick rundown of the Proton Pack you built. Uh, well, basically, it's a kit that I got online from the three, Ghostbuster 3D Props uh, community on Facebook, and that came. It was actually a free kit um, to print 3D print the entire pack. Wow! Uh, including the wand and everything. Um, you paid like 10, 15 bucks. You get a manual that actually shows you how to do it, which is quite useful. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it just went from there. So 90. 90 to 95 percent of it's all 3d printed i'm looking forward to this i saw it yesterday it looks really cool i i couldn't even tell it's 3d printed it looks legit like like what you get at a has lab or something like yeah. that from an outsider's point of view but um real quick this is like i said the workshop And now we're gonna to go to the secret room, right? The secret room. All right, so let's follow us. We're going to the secret room. the beast right here this is it so this is it yeah let's talk about it uh well this is a 1984 uh version of the proton pack from the original ghostbusters yeah so most of it like i said nine percent of it is 3d printed um some exceptions are like the some of these tubes are actually aluminum tubes because i didn't want to spend 12 hours watching a thing make a tube and then <laughs> <laughs> had to sand it and paint it. And then like some of the hardware bits, this is real aluminum, real brass. This is an actual metal bellows. Wires and stuff. Are, the wires and all yeah. that stuff, yeah, obviously not. But some of the smaller uh, hardware bits, like the resistors, the knob, uh, some of that stuff is all 3D printed with resin. Uh, and a lot on the, the wand itself is 3D printed with resin. So handle, the uh, heat sink, which I just noticed I broke yesterday. <laughs> Um, knobs, all that, the, the clippered valves, these guys here, they're all resin printed, but the main body components are all uh, filament for the body and the main core of it. And I went pretty hardcore with the sanding and filling, so that's why you don't, you're not going to see any um, strata print lines. There's anywhere. no lines or nothing no on lines. this thing. I've, everything was Filled, sanded, filled, sanded, filled, sanded, primed, sanded, primed, printed, painted. So in that order. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I just didn't want I didn't want it to look like a 3D print. And 3D printing is great. And um, a lot of people think you just press 
control P and it comes out and it's done, but there's tons of work in the post print clean it up so it doesn't look like a 3D print. Right. This is also 3D print as well, right? Yeah. Now, a question for a guy who doesn't do a lot of 3D printing, how sturdy is it, how durable? Because you just mentioned this, this piece broke right here. Yeah. But did it, does it, is it pretty strong? Uh, yes and no, it depends. Like the filament stuff's stronger because um, uh, I got a thicker walls mm -hmm. and I intentionally made it stronger, the more infill. Um, yeah, the smaller detail-y things like the fins have potential of snapping like that, but it's pretty durable. I mean, the bumper actually yesterday from our little outing, I got a, a legitimate scratch from slamming into one of the walls. Yeah. Um, and I used uh, PETG filament, which is a little different than the standard PLA, so it uh, has a little uh, stronger, I think, tensile strength and all that to it. So it's a little more durable. And like I said, I, I upped all the wall thicknesses and all that stuff to make it a little more stronger too. How many parts were printed to make this entire thing? Uh, geez, I'd have to go back and count, but like the Cyclotron cover, luckily Aaron has a bigger printer than me, so that's okay. one piece, but it's like one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. The the bumper itself is two pieces, iron arms one piece, um, the crank mount housings a single piece. So oh, wow. there's a, a lot of pieces and if I, I'll take off the shell later and I yes. can spin it around and show you the inside goo and you get a better sense of, of what's actually printed. About 30, 40 parts? At least. Yeah, at least. Eh? And hundreds of hours of print time. Now we will go into in the insides as well, but how did you weather it? Like what did you use to weather? Uh, weathering, I just did my standard, uh, I gave it a base silver undercoat mm -hmm. and then top coated it with a flat mat and then just dry brushed the standard with silver paint to give it that scratched look on various areas. And then for sort of the grime, I just use a, a black wash. Uh, it's actually kind of one of my techniques from mini painting to give it a little more grimy look. I want it to look beat up, but not too beat up yeah. and not too grimy. Like it's an 84 pack and uh, it's seen some stuff, but it hasn't been really put through the ringer totally, so. I want to know where you got the dec decals, like these right here, yep. here, here, here. Where'd you get all that? Uh, all the decals are from Etsy, all we designs. Awesome, nice, uh, pre-weathered actually, uh, and they're metallic vinyl, so they give it a really nice finish. The ones on the clippered valves um, have a nice gloss and make it look really authentic. So they're they're great. So yeah, there's a lot of, just like Jamie doing the mods in his kit, there's a lot of makers out there doing different pieces and stuff for this, for the decals, for different valves and all that stuff you can find, or if you want to get the, the lenses cut and all that, so. so real i'm recording this now like wow this looks so this is 3d printed yep so these are yeah the the walkie talkies where he's like he's an ugly spud i'm looking right at him right <laughs> or wherever the line is jamie knows the lines a lot better <laughs> but yeah so again the body and the housing 3d printed with the filament the fine little details like the knobs and the switches and all that um resin, all resin. and i made them so you can twist them if you want it i don't know why That's so cool. and even the it comes, the back comes off, and I'm actually messing around with taking some cheap kids' walkie-talkies. I'm gonna gut them and reverse engineer them so they actually fit in here. So we can <laughs> we can talk to each other. And uh, yeah, I found online another maker who- Oh my God, the holster. Who did a holster, uh, which is awesome. He found an original holster for one of these things, and he modeled it, including the like texture, the leather texture. Oh, look at that texture. Right, and then, uh, yeah, I've added all the, the hardwares and bits. Uh, I'm just waiting for some more rivets to show up and we'll be... Oh, dude, that's so cool. Yeah, turned out good. Did a little um, plastic dip on the, to give it that rubberized look on the antennas. What about the Motorola uh, 
label? Uh, it came with the kit, the, <laughs> the file, <laughs> uh, and I printed them off and just glued them on. Uh, yeah, so these are some examples of some um, misprints uh, or parts that I'm currently working on. So we're talking about how many parts to make it. So this is like part of the, uh, the Cyclotron housing. So you can see it came in one, two, three, four, five, six parts printed, then glued and screwed together. And then, like I said, sand to get rid of all the lines and all the seams. Um, so it looks like one piece of metal. Uh, you can see when things go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> So that was a misprint or the trap that I'm working on, misprint. <laughs> so I'm reprinting parts for that. And then, yeah, again, examples of some of the resin. So this is the, the handle, uh, one of the grips. And this is sort of what it looks like when it comes out of the printer. These are all the supports um, to hold it in place. Right. And then kind of when I start painting it up, um, same thing with like the heat sink, uh, some of the valves. Um, and hardware also 3D printed. The first edition of the um, the bellows for the bumper. Um, yeah, and even down to like the V-hook, um, that's solid. I didn't use it because I got the nice uh, actual aluminum one from GB fans, but that, that'll work. Um, so everything, um, yeah, again, this is a misprint, but this is the bumper when it came in two pieces. So you glue it, fill it, sand the hell out of it, and have a nice finished piece. What's this here? This is the uh, manual, the, uh, how to put it all together. And they did a really great job. They broke it down into piece by piece, tell you which files you need, how to set it up on your print bed. Um, and they even broke it down into like different sizes. If you have a bigger print bed or a smaller print bed, which ways to align things so they they don't break after they're printed. Um, so it's super useful. They did a really great job um, breaking it all down. Cause I, I think- That's awesome. Even with my knowledge of making props and stuff, it'd still be pretty confusing, I think. It shows sort of the list of the, the pieces. And this is my, my go-to sort of reference image I got from GB fans off the website. Just, just to help like identify all the different parts. Like, oh, that's the bumper. That's the cyclotron, you know, like all these different names for the different parts. So that was quite useful as well. So you want to put the patient on the table and open yeah. her up? All right, let's do this. One, one mod that I did to make it not like a 90, an 84 pack is I actually put in the, the afterlife power switch. It makes it a little easier to turn on and off. There you go, there's the inside goo. We got our power cell, light bar, cyclotron lights, large battery pack, uh, which I've wired up. So there's a, there's a master power switch and mm -hmm. then a, a plugging outlet. So I, I don't have to take the battery out or anything apart to charge it. I can just plug it right in oh. and charge it like so. What's this made out of? So this, to make it screen accurate, it would have been a solid piece of aluminum. I had it work some, it's called dye bond. It's used in um, a lot of signage uh, applications and actually building siding. And it's like a top layer veneer of aluminum with a plastic core and then another layer of aluminum on the outside. So th <laughs> this is actually an old graphic from an exhibit we had uh, today kicking around. So it was a scrap piece that I was able to, to cut. Uh, it is strong. It's super strong. That's super strong. Yeah, and it's light yeah. too. It's it's probably it yeah. just as light, if not lighter than aluminum. And then yeah, that's just bolted onto the, the Alice frame pack. Now- Oh, I love this. <laughs> Where'd you get that? It was part of the, the stickers. Part of the stickers? And then I got I had some stamp, uh, some die stamps, so I just put my name and my, oh. and my TKID in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so it's attached to the Alice pack. Now, this isn't screen accurate, kids, so don't yell at me, but I cut out the center bar because um, the original one just had the center bar and one screw hole going in here. Mm -hmm. 
I had it like that. I put it on, not even five minutes, I said, nope. Cause that center bar and that screw was like digging straight into my spine. Yeah. And I couldn't even have it on for like five minutes. So I made my own little spacers and just attached it up top. So there's two attachment points. There's four attachment points for the, the frame, which in my opinion makes it actually stronger than just having the one um, pack the attachment point for the for the Alice frame. So that's pretty much the motherboard and the frame. It's the one thing I'll say is a little tricky is trying to figure out the goo on the inside. Now this is what we were talking about, like all the different pieces. I don't know if you can see this. So this, this shows all the different pieces. So like, you know, one, two, three, four, five for the cyclotron. This is a piece, this is a piece, this is a piece, this is a piece, this. Is a piece, this. Uh, and they're all glued and bolted together, so it's solid. It's not going anywhere. Um, the tricky thing, though, is figuring out like the path to put things and how to route it through. So I had to like kind of reverse engineer and measure things. So I'm like, oh, it's this far from here and it's mm. this far from there, which I'm gonna do more of because we got plans. We got a soundboard coming. Uh, just shipped from GB fans. So it'll make all the cool power up noises and overheating noises and play the music. So we got a big old speaker to put in here. And Aaron and I are also putting in a smoke pack uh, <laughs> for when it overheats and all the smoke kind of comes out of the end filter at the bottom. So that'll be going hopefully in here somewhere. So yeah, that's, that's it. But you can basically, you know, you can see the difference between finished and raw. Um, yeah, the, you can just run your fingers over, you can hear the zip. Yeah, so like I said, just a lot of time sanding and filling. Uh, I did a top coat of um, truck bed liner and then spray painted it all the same black so it's a nice uniform black because the truck bed liner, the flat black that I was using wasn't the same. Um, but yeah. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. And we did test, we did try this on uh, yesterday when we yep. went mini golf and we banged around, bumped around. How'd you feel wearing it after, uh, for the first time really? Yeah, in for, public? I felt great. It was a lot, it was more comfortable than I was expecting it to be. And we were in it for like what, about an hour? Uh, longer, but longer, yes. Yeah. yeah. And if, if I had to loosen the straps off at one point, but once I found that sweet, spot it was fine and like i said i actually did receive some real damage weathering so you can see my silver paint job i don't know if you can see that but that right there those little scratches are brown that's from hitting a shelf or wow. something that's <laughs> the mini golf got throw it away redo no that's, that's <laughs> sweet actual weathering can't yeah can't fake that that's pretty sweet so yeah real live action weathering Oh, dude, this is incredible. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I've spent a crap ton of time down here. From beginning to this point, how long did it take you? I know it's hard to put things, but how yeah. many hours or days or years? I'd, I'd say hundreds of hours, um, including print time. But I started this November 1st last year, after you guys came over and Jamie told me he was making his. Yeah. I was like, I'm in. <laughs> so November 1st, I went, found the files, downloaded stuff, and started printing the first piece, which was the this top part of the cyclotron, and just went from there. Why did you decide to build one in the first place? Um, well, unlike the Star Wars and the 501st, this for me was just like, I think a lot like Jamie, where it was just one of these things where I love this movie, and I have such strong memories, and I always thought the, the proton pack was so cool, and I just want it to have one. It'll be an awesome Halloween costume. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a nice change from the TIE pilot. It'll be, yeah. And it'll be nice where I've, you know, met up with some of the Ghostbusters of BC now and hopefully we'll do some events with them. Might be a little tricky in the island, but do some events, maybe do some charity work with them. But one thing I actually really enjoyed about this is I'm not knocking the 501st. I'm still a member. I love it. But this isn't nearly as uptight and anally retentive about the details. Yeah. Like it's pretty screen accurate, but I didn't have to have somebody review it and approve it and say, no, 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 that crank knob needs to be at 45 degrees instead of 60 
or anything like that. The Ghostbusters BC that said, do you look like a Ghostbuster? Is it recognized as a Ghostbuster? Mm -hmm. Cool. And now it's up to you how you feel, how accurate, how, how, how accurate you want to be. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. for me, like I said, the, the backstory of my pack is an 84 pack they've had since then. It's been modded. It's been seen some stuff. I'm yeah. probably going to do some more mods. Like one thing I like about the Afterlife pack is on the, the clippered here, there's all those brass wires that come out and run up to this too. Right, right, I might right. add that. I added the Afterlife switch. So I might add more mods to it to make it look a little more unique, right? Yeah, it's it's been fun. It's been a lot of time, a lot of effort. I don't know if my wife likes it as much as I do, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's been good. It's been a fun project. I'm working with Jamie and Aaron um, and you kicking back ideas and how to do things. So it's been good. So there you go. Thank you so much for showing like the pro tip packs, the gear, everything. I'm like super excited about <laughs> all this sort of stuff. Yeah. So um, if people want to check out your uh, Instagram account, where can they find you? Hose Nose Paints. Uh, it's just D&D minis. I haven't had anything new in a while because I've been busy making proton packs. This is, and walkie talkies. And, walkie -talkies <laughs> and, and traps and etc. So. But uh, yeah, there's some stuff on there. And if you haven't checked out yet, Steve has appeared on our podcast the last few times talking about the Dark Crystal, Best Napoleon Dynamite. Ever. And <laughs> it, it sparked some great discussion. So um, other than that, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Sorry Jamie couldn't be here, but he'll be back for the next episode. Um, other than that, you ready for it? I am. Right. We're, We're ready, ready to, to believe, believe you. you.